Well, hey, all you wiretappers out there, it's a little bonus episode. You know, uh, earlier this week, uh, I had one about Ross Prio and Tony Accardo. Well, here's a little more modern. Uh, I just saw this in the uh, news about Michael Marcello, or Mickey, I guess they called him. It was Jimmy Marcello's brother. Now, if you remember, Jimmy Marcello was the Bob boss, I guess. Actually, he was the boss who went to jail at the family secrets trial and Michael was r- trying to run everything visiting his brother Jimmy in jail and trying to run everything he'd already been in charge of all of his poker machine operation which is a huge amount of money that was mainly in the western suburbs and 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 so he was you know he was not a uh he wasn't a killer but he was not a, a small time guy. He, he was part of the upper echelon, really. He was part of the upper echelon, really. He was at that point in time during the family secrets trial. Mickey Marcello was the guy that the outfit designated to take a four thousand dollar monthly payment to Nick Calabrese or to his family to try to buy his silence, which it didn't really work. But uh, they wired up the prison cell where Michael Marcello was visiting his brother, little Jimmy Marcello, and they owe her some really interesting stuff, which led to a couple more cases for sure, and led to a case on Michael uh, about a couple of different things, and another you know, kind of addition that I don't know if he actually caught a case on this, uh, if Jimmy caught a case uh, for this, but it also put a, uh, a U.S. Marshal in jail, a guy named uh, Ambrose. I did a whole show on that. If you want to go back and look for the U.S. Marshal, uh, it was a Chuck Ambrose, I think, or Charles Ambrose, but any A M B R O S E. And just uh, search for that in my on my website, and you'll find it. Uh, he was uh, uh, Ambrose was charged with leaking details about where they were hiding Nick Calabrese. It's a really interesting story how they figured out from the two little tidbits of information that they picked up on the wire on the wiretaps. wasn't wiretaps; they were uh, my hidden microphones, but off the tapes to put it together. I remember it was like uh, my they thought his dad was a policeman and his dad had gone to jail with those other guys. And they look back and you people are from Chicago. You remember the, I think it's a Lafayette seven or something like that. The bunch of policemen were shaking down, uh, bars in Chicago and, and they all went to the penitentiary and, and they also knew that, uh, this Ambro, whoever this guy was that was leaking information, his dad had died. So they started putting it together from those little tidbits. And one of them was Ambrose. He had gone to prison and he, he was deceased and he had a son who was a U.S. Marshal who happened to be part of the team that was guarding Nick Calabrese and moving him around. So anyhow, but but the story about Michael Marcello, I think, is kind of tells you these guys, I tell you what, these guys, and, and I've known people myself, spent a lot of time off the books jobs, didn't pay into Social Security. You know, you don't pay into Social Security, you don't get any back. I, I can testify to that because the whole time I was on the police department, I didn't pay into Social Security because we had our own private pension plan and we paid into that. So I get hardly any Social Security, only from the money I earned before I was on the police department, from some off-duty jobs I had that they withheld Social Security. And after I left, then I paid Social Security. I worked pretty hard for at least 15 years uh, practicing law. And then once I started getting Social Security, I don't have to pay back in anymore. So I don't have to pay Social Security on money I make now. But I, I you know, I paid in a little bit, but I don't get very much. So uh, Marcelo had never, you know, he'd always ran these businesses and, and help with outfit stuff and work for cash. <laughs> so he wanted to draw Social Security in 2016. He'd been, done a little time. He was back out. And... and uh, they alleged whenever they charged him that he had falsely inflated his social security earnings. Well, now how could you do that? Uh, he applied for benefits in February of 2017 and, and lied about his work history is what he did. He claimed that he had worked for places like Lehman brothers, 
or the ITT Technical Institute, both of which are companies that are totally out of business. There's another kind of a peanut thing, big peanut company that had gotten a bunch of trouble and, you know, had filed bankruptcy and all these companies that he claimed he worked for uh, had gone out of business. So the records were really hard to find. <laughs> and and so how did he get into this and, and what they alleged when they charged him with this stealing from Social Security was he had a friend named Walter Paredes of Rosemont, which is, a, I believe, a Chicago suburb. And, and Paredes has been recruiting people for an imprisoned serial, not killer, but a serial con man, a career con man named George Ruth. <laughs> Could it be Babe Ruth? George Herman Ruth. Babe Ruth. Well, this is George Herman Ruth, who claims to be the nephew of the legendary Babe Ruth. He was in federal prison at Fort Dix, New Jersey uh, at one time. And and while he was, he was in for some other scams, I don't even know what, I didn't go back and research him, but, but he was recruiting other prisoners and relatives of prisoners to get social security numbers and then file bogus uh, tax returns, filed 178 bogus ta tax returns. He got caught on this. That's how I know the numbers from the prison and, and purportedly he was able to obtain a $360,000 in bogus refunds. And I'm sure he split that with some of these people he got the social security numbers for. And they'll just say, Hey, I, I don't know. You know, I didn't do it. You know, it wasn't me. And, and somebody must stole my social security number, which they do all the time. They carried on this scheme from 2003, 2004. What they did is they had the refunds deposited in certain accounts. You, know, you can have your refund just deposited in an account. And so they had these refunds deposited in an account, which were controlled by George Herman Ruth, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth's nephew. Crazy story, huh? But this is the guy that, that schooled uh, Michael Marcello in how to rip off Social Security. Uh, whenever they went to... Uh, uh, prosecute this at the end and get a sentence. Uh, they said some kind of interesting thing, uh, things. The, the prosecutor said this scheme was really unsophisticated and pitifully easy for the government to unravel, particularly because, uh, all the companies that see this George Herman Ruth is the one that filled all these papers out for, uh, Michael Marcello and, and got him the money. And he used the same contact information for the companies that he, Cited said were in previous employers of Marcello's. You know, you use the same name, same address, and same uh, 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 phone number uh, for these companies. So, uh, Mikey's lawyer, uh, Mikey Mickey, Mickey's lawyer said during his plea, he ended up playing that he said this is a low rung, late coming on conduct. He said this was low rung conduct. Uh, Mickey's lawyer said during his plea that this was low rung conduct and that nothing required any sophistication. He just gave his social security number to somebody else and then lied when they asked him about it, said he worked at some places he didn't. Uh, the, the U.S. attorney <laughs> kind of replied that, uh, that, you know, uh, all he did was just find a new way to steal. And, and, the, and the judge looked at it. And he said, you know, he said, this guy would have kept doing this his entire life, drawing Social Security that he didn't actually, wasn't actually owed. That's, folks, that's your your money and my money, too. Let me tell you what Mickey Marcello said. I asked this court to show mercy as I walked through life's final miles. Like, oh, man. So in the end, the sentencing guidelines only call for 8 to 14 months. Marcello's attorney objected, of course, and asked for 4 to 10 months. The judge, actually, the judge ended up agreeing, saying that, you know, they were outrageous crimes, but they weren't very sophisticated, and they were, they did go under the guidelines. I don't know exactly how much he got, but he got some time. This is a couple of years ago now, so he's back out again. But just, you know, this is just another little example of how far these guys will go. I mean, they, you know, they, they, if there's a dime laying there, they're going to grab it. And, and if you don't look around and see whose dime it is, they're going to grab it and say it's theirs. Uh, all right. Okay, folks, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this little bonus episode. And don't forget, I ride a motorcycle, so look out for motorcycles when you're out there. And 
if you have a friend or a relative or yourself that has problems with PTSD and you've been in the service, be sure and go to the uh, VA hotline or the, the VA website and get that hotline number and give them a call. Thanks, guys. Call.